Good evening. I am uh, Jake, Azencor, Roshane, whichever one. And today we're going to be going into our little lesson of Blender. We'll be making a barrel. Before we even get into that, just sharing a little verse with you guys. It's Isaiah 55, verse 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to a God for he will abundantly pardon. Now just take that verse into consideration. Know this, that he who confesseth his sins will have mercy, but he who hideth them. Well, that's going down the other route. So let me just show you exactly what we'll be making today. Uh, we'll be making this here um, barrel, really low polygon barrel, and we're just going to take you through the steps of creating something like this using the modifier. Now, I'm not going to be teaching you how to make a barrel per se. I'm just showing you what you can use to make those barrels. And you can actually apply the same um, modifiers, the same concepts to any other um, project you might be working with. All right, so let's just start up our Blender interface. Now, right now, I was working on this barrel here. Right, and what I'm going to do is just start a new one altogether. Right, so right now, we're just um, in our default view. And just to show you what keys I'll be pressing, I'm going to start the screencast keys, which is an add-on that you can actually include uh, in your user preferences. I'm going to start display. And right now, you can actually see the keys that I'll be pressing. Right here is my mouse cursor. And on the left side, you'll be seeing those um, keyboard shortcuts. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, first of all, is make our first plank, because essentially a barrel is going to be, making, be made sorry, with quite a bunch of planks in there. Now, first thing I'm going to do is scale this down on the y-axis, just to kind of give you that mm, thin look right there. I'm going to scale this on the z-axis. Now, right now, you're probably thinking, this is a little too thin. I'm going to scale this on x, and you are probably right. Right? It looks a little thin, so I'm just going to stretch this off a bit more on y. Right? And that's okay. Now, that's what we have so far. In our camera view, you can see it's just taking up a lot more space. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, with our plank, what we're going to do is kind of give it a few loop cuts. All right, go into edit mode, which is tab. Or you can actually press the little object mode, edit mode thing there. So select the object first. Now, the purpose of the loop cut in this particular case, I'm just going to choose loop cut and slide. I'm going to increase the amount of cuts to about um, five. Now, the purpose of the loop cut is that when we're doing our deformation, essentially we're going to need some joints, and these will serve as the joints to get this thing to bend into that bracket shape that um, most barrel planks have. Now, once we have that out of the way, and you'll notice that my 3D cursor hasn't, cursor hasn't yet moved, I'm going to proceed to add my first modifier, which is our array modifier. Now, right now, you can see the array modifier it added an extra one by default. The count is two. Right now, the relative offset is one, which means at the end of the first object, as you can see here, if I hide this, it creates the same object again. Now, if you were to increase the relative offset, you can actually offset it some more. Um, left, right, you can go as far as um, Y and even Z, all depending on what you want to create. Set these values back to zero. And my relative offset, I'm going to set to 1.05. Can I give it just a little bit space in between? Right? Now, something to note about modifiers, the order in which you put your modifiers will affect the result you get. So it's best to go with, um, well, I guess with practice, you will see exactly what it is you want to create and how you want the effect to appear. Now, there's one more thing we're going to add. Because right now, if we were to just increase the count, you can see how many planks. And we kind of want to go in a circle. So what we're going to do is add, add a curve. That's a curve circle, which is the Bezier circle. Now, as usual, your objects will appear wherever your 3D cursor is. So I'm going to scale this out a little bit like so. And what we're going to do is contour this particular set of planks in that circular. Now, the difference between a Bezier curve or Bezier circle or any Bezier object <coughs> in comparison to a mesh is that your Bezier usually is used for paths. And also you can use it for creating somewhat vector shapes 
and um, you can eventually turn them into mesh objects as well. So if you want to create a tube or a hose, you can actually use this thing to do it. And um, afterwards, you can edit it the way you want to using the object moving so forth. So selecting back this thing, you can actually have the fit type to be fixed count, which is what we have here. Right. And you can also have fit type to be fit curve. Right now, right now you're not seeing anything, so I'm going to kind of change this to be Bezier Circle. Right now you're not seeing it still. That's because we need to add one more object to our modifier list, and that's the curve object. When you add your curve, you have to define what exactly is the curve you're applying with. Bezier Circle works like that. Now going back to our array list, we see um, here fit curve, um, fit length, curve right and it's going around the curve same way we want it to let's just try fixed length fit um, fixed count right I'm just gonna carry this up some more and choose fit curve no let me just scale out this curve some more Right. It doesn't seem to be conforming the way I want it to, but previously it would just go straight around here. I'm just gonna stick with, um, I'm gonna remove this for now and try choosing it again. Let's see what happens. It doesn't seem to be working currently. Right, so let's just um, stick with what we know and fit the, not length, but fixed count and just scale this in properly so that it conforms itself to the shape of your barrel. Conversely, the fixed length or fixed curve will actually have fit the amount of planks to that particular curve. All right, so that's what we have so far. All right, let's continue. Now we get our barrel shape. Right now it looks a little too thin, really. What I can do is um, same curve object we have, scale it out. Right, selecting this. Let me try one more time. What can I say? It's not working the way I want it to work. It seems to be going halfway. Object offset. No. Let's try this again. Um. Fit curve, 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 curve. Let's do it. Let's move it up. Still not working, but what can I say? Let's just um, fix the count and increase that to a particular amount, which would be that setting the relative offset to 1.05 again. All right, going to front orthographic view and see what we have there. And I'm pretty sure I have some overlapping, so I'm gonna. Do one of two things is scale that in like so. Alright, so what we have now looking in front of you is something like this. Alright, wonderful. Now the next part of it is actually getting to contort the way we need it to. You now this particular object is a little too much space in between. So I'm just gonna scale this in holding shift so you get a much smaller gap. No, like I was saying, the next part of it is contorting the object to get that bracket shape. Right, the next modifier you're going to add is your um, lattice. Right, now right now you're not going to see anything being done because we need to apply also lattice object. Now if I go into um, wireframe view, I can see that little tiny box there, which is actually like a cube. But it's a lattice object. So what I'm going to do, front orthographic view, which is one on your keyboard. I'm just hide this toolbox, the T. Uh, scale this out, just to get it to kind of do that. And scale on the Z axis. Once I got that, I know it's definitely taking the shape all the way through. So let's uh, continue some more. Now there's one more thing we need to add, and that's the amount of um, cuts per se in our lattice. Now if we look here in a more isometric view, 
we can see that u cuts it along that axis, v cuts it along that axis, and w along that axis. So all we need to do is add more w. Right? Once we have w, 3 means 1, 2, 3, really. So what I'm going to do is go into edit mode for this lattice object and select those points and scale them out. Now you're not really seeing anything done yet, but right now, go back into our modifiers, choose the object you want to use as a deformation, and choose lattice. Now because you're pulling out these sides, the same thing happens on the outside here. So if we were to go back here and scale it out, you can see that barrel shape just taking effect right there. All right. Now the cool thing about lattice is that because it's really just distorting the object, you can actually do some little effects with it. So you can actually move stuff like this and you know those kind of hourglass things. So you can actually create a plank and create just an hourglass using the same lattice object. Alright, let's continue. There is another part to this and that's actually creating the rings of our barrel. Alright, so going back into our regular view. What I'm going to do is add my rings. Now, to get the rings in properly, I'm going to have to hide my, my lattice modifier. So I'm getting this little view here. One more thing I want to do. I don't like the way this looks. I'm going to scale this. Scale this. Out. Like so. You know what? It's fine. I just wanted an even amount. Rings. I didn't want an uneven amount, so I'm gonna scale this out a little more. And in my array modifier, I'm just gonna add one more and scale that in again. Awesome, cool. Let's continue. Um, we're gonna add one more thing, and we're in top view right now. Like I said, your 3D cursor, so your objects get added. We're gonna add a circle. Now your mesh circle, either, I mean your curve circle, your mesh circle this time. Essentially, we want to create those little rings. So I want to scale this out just to the center here. And afterwards, go into edit mode. Go into wireframe view first of all, which is Z. Choose my rings. I'm going to scale these out. Sorry, extrude them first and scale them out so that they're on the outside of the barrel set. Now, now that that's done, I'm going to choose A so I can select everything. Press E to extrude and it always extrudes along the normal, which is the same direction that those things are pointing in. So I can move this barrel down here in object mode. I'm just going to carry this down. And doing the same thing, I'm going to press D to duplicate, Shift D, and just move this part up. This will do it a little more height still. But that's fine. Same thing again, Shift D, duplicate those, carry this up, Shift D again, carry this over. Pardon me, I'm a little ill, so just bear with me for a bit. And uh, one more set to go in the center. Mm, just three rings. You can always shrink the middle ones, but as a current, I think these are a little too small anyway, so. That is fine. Back in my um, regular solid view, what we need to do now, we can unhide this lattice modifier and you get that whole barrel shape. Now, this one has a problem. It doesn't contort to the shape of the barrel, which is why we need to add a modifier and that's the same lattice object to that lattice and it conforms itself to the shape of the barrel. Now there's a last part to this is just creating the top part of this whole barrel thing. And we can easily do that by going in top view again. And we're going to add, hmm, not a plank, but a plane. So I'm just going to add my plane there. I'm going to do something pretty interesting. Going into edit mode. I'm going to wireframe mode. I'm going to move this up here, right to the top of my barrel just about there and the next part of it is I'm gonna scale this out in top view on the y-axis and that is what I'm gonna do and the next thing I'm gonna do is cut it lengthwise within the loop cut and just delete these two sides here now let me tell you why I'm doing this I'm gonna take advantage of one more modifier and that is our mirror modifier 
essentially what happens on one side will be reflected on the other side. So currently, I'm going to add my modifier here, mirror object, and I should tell you, this mirroring occurs from the origin point. So if you move the origin point, then your mirror is going to occur somewhere else, and you don't really want to do so much of a distortion. So I'm just going to pull this in, and you can see that's, that's bringing in the other side. So the next part of it is now is to duplicate this, we carry this over here, and we can actually extrude on the x-axis. Take that, scale it in, shift D, just give it a little space, All right? Extrude that on the x-axis, right, and scale that in. One more time, shift D, carry this out, extrude on the x-axis, and scale that in. Isn't that great? So we have this is the top part of the barrel. Now we need to kind of make it more thick. All right, so I'm going to go back in front of you. I'm going to extrude. And by default, it occurs on the z-axis like so. So me doing this now, right? Naturally, if you're going to have the top of a barrel, you're going to also want the bottom part. Now, what we can simply do, because my origin point is here, I can have it just reflect down here as well. So I'm going to change my axis not only for x alone, but also for z. And that gives me the bottom part of my barrel. Now, if I go back into our solid view, you get somewhat, well, or barrel shape, and that's essentially your entire barrel. Now, to get it to be a proper view, you're going to go into camera mode, which is zero, and press shift F, which gives you flyby mode. Essentially, you can move the camera around, have things zoom in, and all those little things right there. I mean, if you were animating, flyby mode would be pretty cool, because you can actually set the auto keyframe points and all that stuff. Now, if I were to render this, it's going to turn out pretty ugly. One, because my lighting isn't really set up. So what I'm going to do is just, just a few things. One, my world settings, add my ambient occlusion. Now, although Blender's, Blender has a cycles render, right? right now we're using the internal render, and it's not really per se for rendering purposes, but rather just to create the object itself, not dealing with rendering at all. Afterwards, you can choose whichever render you want to use. The cycles one is pretty cool. It's not as difficult to learn as some might think, but it's actually pretty cool and gives you more realistic results on bias shading and all that stuff. But one thing is that it just uses nodes. That's about it. Right? So with the world settings there, I'm going to choose my lamp over here and just change some soft settings and samples. Samples to 20, soft size to about 10, and just re render that. If I re render that, a barrel starts coming out not too horrible. It's actually pretty good for a low poly barrel. And with that setup, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the barrel is rendering, rendering. Depending on the computer you have, if it can't handle too much sampling, you don't want to set it too high, or you might take some time um, rendering. But if you have a good graphics card, why not play with it, right? So that barrel is the end of. Or tutorial I'm probably gonna put a link so you can actually download this particular object you can always check out cgtextures.com sign up there and they'll give you um, textures you can use to actually put some UV wrapping on this so it looks more realistic so till then take care and God bless you